I've been having a lot of fun with this car. I don't have a ton of cash to put into this car and I have less time. But whenever I can, I sneak out here and do a little project. Honey, can you come help paint this picture, please? Yes, dear, I'll be right there. Okay, well, I'll have to go get the screw gun. It is in the shop. Hey, son. We're doing a series of videos that are gonna help you get an old car going again. And I'm gonna focus on this car. This week, we're gonna work on the brake distribution block and proportioning valve. That's a project you can get done in a Saturday afternoon. I think you'll enjoy this. I'm not going to focus on the rest of the brake job. We are going to focus on the distribution block and proportioning valve. It's located right here on this firewall. If you can get it out without taking off this support in the master cylinder, you're better than me. I'm not even going to try. I'm going to take off these elements before I even try to get down to there. One thing I always stress on an old car like this that's been parked for a while, don't even try the brakes. They're going to, that master cylinder is going to be bad if it's been sitting for years. If you jump in that car, one of two things are going to happen. One is, if you put that brake down, you'll actually get some brakes, but they'll expand and not contract, and your car will be locked up. The other thing that'll probably happen is you'll just put contaminants, old brake fluid and rust, out the back of the master cylinder into the booster. Then you'll ruin it eventually. You don't want contaminants, brake fluid, inside the brake booster. Like often is the case, we're not going to be able to remove this master cylinder without at least loosening up the booster. I have a good feeling this booster is going to need replacing anyway. It's been a lot of years. Let's see what's inside this master cylinder. That'll give us a clue if the booster is going to need replacing. Look at that. It's not as crusty as I thought, but that back cylinder is empty. And since I didn't see a lot of leakage on any four wheels, I'll bet money all that fluid is in here. So next, the booster comes off. Before we can get this master cylinder out, this being a big block, we'll have to take off the valve cover. Don't get ahead of yourself here. You'll be tempted to take the proportioning distribution block assembly off here, but first crack those lines. We at least got to get them loose before you loosen up the whole assembly. Sometimes there's minimal undercoating, sometimes it's so thick you can't even see the bolts. In this case, I'm going to have to chip away at that undercoating with a screwdriver or other scraping tool to even be able to get my socket on there. There we go, there's what we're after. If this looks anything inside like the wheel cylinders did, take a look at this nice puppy. That's what the rear wheel cylinders looked like. If the rear cylinders look like this, we know that this isn't going to be perfect when we get inside. Let's go see. Now comes the fun part. We're going to break this puppy apart. Little ABC here. This is a distribution block. This is a proportioning valve. In 1967, the proportioning valve looked just like this, but was located in the tranny tunnel back by the differential in line. In 1970, they figured out a way to unitize these. So in 1970, it's a disc brake proportioning valve and, and a distribution block combination. We're not worried about that today. We're really rebuilding this one. Again, you're going to need your good line wrenches. If you don't have good line wrenches, and even if you do sometimes, you might have to sacrifice these in and out lines and just use a box end or a socket on here to get these off. 
no big deal. We have these on our website, pre-bent, ready to go, and they're usually ugly anyway, so you might just want to sacrifice yours from the get-go. Another thing we're very concerned about, this is a very valuable piece, it has part numbers on it, it's brass, brass is a soft metal, we don't want to scar it up. I need vice grips to anchor this, so I'm going to protect it with a rag. My experience, one is never enough. You need two quality pair of vice grips to be able to do this, or the valve will just spin when you give it pressure. This is the end that usually gives me trouble. This one came out pretty easy. Doesn't look too clean in there. If the valve was the way it should be, and, and the piston inside, the brass piston, was nice and clean and everything, we should be able to go tink, tink, tink. That's not budging. Also, if it was a healthy one, we should be able to reach in here and it should spring up and down. There's a spring inside. This one is frozen. So we got a few tricks. It's like four tricks to get it out. You're gonna be tempted to push that piston out the back side through this little hole using a drill bit or something. That'd work good if it wasn't stuck, but if you try to give it about much more than that much pressure, you've ruined a very delicate little rubber check ball with three little brass tabs over it. Don't even go there. If you can't get it out like this, you gotta to move to step two. Put it in your vise, squish down, get a drywall screw, fine thread. You probably have something better around than this, but this is what I had handy and it usually works. Just a few turns. Now if you go too far you'll break the screw in there and then you got a whole new problem. Just a few turns. Oh, it moved. Here we go. Oh, look at that. Right there, that crusty, rust-colored stuff, that's the remnants of the spring. That So obviously this wasn't doing its job. Oh boy, look inside there. That's nasty. This one was stubborn, but it wasn't as bad as some I've seen. I've bought parts cars that have been open the elements for 20 years. In that case, visit our website and you'll see the extra tricks. One of which is to have one person with a claw hammer while the other person has a grease gun threaded into the backside. So you're hydraulically pushing the piston out. A little more pressure with a solid like grease than air. And if that doesn't work, then you get the heat out. But just heat, not, you don't want to melt it because you don't want to melt that. So when I say heat, we're talking a little bit in this area, this region here, not down here where that plastic is, not red hot. Luckily we got this one out without too much trouble. With this little handy kit that we've developed, you can rebuild your proportioning valve and distribution block. These are not your everyday O-rings. These are square-edged O-rings or X-rings. And they're, they're made of a special material that's rated uh, EPDM. It's, it's meant to uh, withstand years of brake fluid. Another thing we've done 
instead of the little cheapy spring that Ford put in there that was designed to last 10 or 20 years, we've had our springs made out of Enconnel. It's an exotic alloy that will last forever. Let's start peeling off the different rings. This one here is just a simple O-ring, so it just seals the end of the uh, cigar valve, proportioning valve. That was the easy one to get off. The next one on the piston. And then the smaller one on the piston. Now this one isn't a seal at all. All this square edged O-ring does is protect the weep hole from getting contaminants entering in it. And when I say weep hole, when this thing fails, the, the fluid has to go somewhere. So they put a little tiny hole. And so the fluid has a way, when that, when that piston is seized, that fluid has an escape route. You'll see a little puddle on the ground under your car when, when this unit has gone bad. Now to clean this bore out here, I use these Harbor Freight cheapy little bottle brushes, if you will. Hey, I found the spring. It actually is there. The spring's still in there. It was just so bonded to the, to the wall and goo, I, I couldn't tell it. So we're going to dig that spring out. There she is. Wow. I think we got it. Now let's go clean up the outside of this, the valve. You might not want to put this on your wire wheel. Fine steel wool probably be a little bit better suited for this delicate piece. Just put it in your fingers and twist it until it shines. Your main objective is to get any contaminants out of these grooves here. This is where the O-rings seat. They have to be clean. Remember, we got to get this little check ball nice and clean inside because it needs to be able to move back and forth just a little bit. Okay, time for reassembly. First, the big O-ring, I should say bigger O-ring, on the end. There's a little red dot on these. The dot goes on the outside, so as you roll it on, when you're done and said, the dot should be here. This part's a little tricky. You do not want the end of this spring, which is a little bit sharp, to damage the next O-ring. So you gotta kinda keep those two apart from each other for a second. There's our red dot it's on the outside. Let's not let this spring get in the way and scratch this O-ring in any way. Put a little brake fluid in there for lubrication. Now that's how it's supposed to operate. When I reach in with this screwdriver with not much pressure, it should go in and out just a little bit. We're ready to cap it off.
Okay, now let's do the distribution block. Now this one has a piston in it as well, but there's no fragile plastic rubber or brass parts around it. It's a sturdy uh, cylinder and there's usually less corrosion in here. So on this one, we can go through the backside with a punch and tap it out. Much easier. Looks like it's stuck in there pretty good. If that piston's stuck, what happens is it won't travel back and forth and activate this little light here. When I say light, this little switch that activates the light. Now, one thing I should have done first was take this out. There it goes. When your light is uh, going on in the dash, it's because of this has traveled to unseat this. So this is the easy one. We're going to clean this up with steel wool, replace the three O-rings, and slide it back in. These two take square-edged O-rings. The last one is a more common round-edged O-ring. But you might not think so, because over the years, its edges get squared off from use and being compressed. Now, if you forget which way this piston goes in, just keep in mind that groove aligns with this switch. So it goes in like that. When you push the piston in, you'll feel it, you'll feel the pin of the switch hit the groove of the piston. So drive the piston all the way in, put this in, then push the piston and blink, you'll feel it fall in place. If you get confused on which way the cylinder goes, keep in mind the bracket covers the part number so you can't see the part number once it's in the car. And that completes it. We'll let you know how it works, up, works out later when we get the brake job done. That'll be a few days from now, but I have all confidence we're going to put it in, it's going to work perfectly, and it's not going to leak. Honey, what are you working on? Um, I, I, I had to find the drill and the bit and the battery was dead. I'll be right there, I promise. That'd be great. Thanks. I promise. There, just tap it with a butter knife and it falls off. <laughs>